come back to Kenya when Baba was fighting for multi-party democracy. Students were at the forefront. But fast forward, what are we seeing nowadays? Comrades are not working. Comrades are sleeping because their leaders are not doing anything. We want to work on the duale bill. And Baba, the status of that bill, so far, we've already reached, we've already passed the committee stage. We are going for the second reading stage. That is the committee and then the committee of the whole house where we will pass this bill. It is something that it is just a matter of time and we shall pass it. But that is not the issue because even during my time, we had very strong student leaders and equally we had student leaders who were doing nothing. And history still remembers them up to date. And those student leaders went through the universal suffrage. They were elected. For example, without naming names, at any particular time that we were holding demonstrations which are enshrined in the Kenyan constitution, we used to come together as student leaders. But there are those universities who also felt that they had their right to defend or rather protect the government. Those student leaders went to bed with the government. They were elected through universal suffrage. And Kenyatta University was always very notorious. Very notorious. And if you look at where their student leaders are, the former student leaders, at least you'll get one or just two somewhere. But the rest, there's one who contested for MCA Baba just outside Kenyatta University and failed. <laughs> because of the atrocities that these student leaders were committing during their time. As a student leader, the process of getting a student leader during your tenure is through the electoral college system. Now you are a leader. What are you doing? Why are you quiet when Kenyans are suffering? Student leadership, or rather the students, should form part of opposition at any single time. During Mandamano, when we were holding Mandamano, because of the high cost of living, you were nowhere to be seen. Just save for a few student leaders who were there. But the majority were nowhere to be seen. Why? Because you chose to be with the oppressors. And we say that in the end, God will punish both the oppressed and the oppressors equally. The oppressed shall be punished for accepting oppression while the oppressors shall be punished for oppressing the oppre oppressed. So you should, <laughs> you should know what to do with that information. So as comrades, let us try. Because students are suffering from yourself, if you look at your background, from the slums you are coming from, from the villages you are coming from. Look at your parents. They are suffering. So this opportunity that has been bestowed on you is for you to deliver to the comrades. Do it. Even if it is not for the comrades, it is for your own good as a student leader. It forced me, Baba, to call some student leaders we met. They held demonstrations, and you saw. Nowadays, Machakos University, they are really doing better than any other university in terms of demonstrations. And congratulations. <laughs> I've been following up, and you are doing a good job. University of Nairobi is dead. Kenyatta University is dead. Maseno University is dead. Ijaton Moi, dead. So as student leaders, Tuk that is just close here, dead. So as student leaders, what are you doing? We have issues ranging from the cost of living that you should be talking about to issues affecting the lives of students in campus. Nowadays, student leaders are scared of suspensions and expulsions. Yes, the most important thing that took you to the university is to get a degree certificate. The second most important thing that you can come out with from the university 
is either a husband or a wife. <laughs> the third most important is the fact that you are working for comrades. But nowadays, Baba, the student leaders cannot lead anything. Instead of being leaders, they are nowadays dealers. They are dealing. They go to these cabinet secretaries. They go to these offices. There is no way you can work as a student leader if you befriend people in government. Because how then will you do your role under the doctrine of separation of powers, checks and balances? You should be providing checks and balances to the current government. But you cannot deliver if you are in bed with those people in government because you are already conflicted. So as comrades, let us try as much as we can. Being suspended, being expelled is an occupational hazard in leadership. Once you are a politician, once you are a leader, there are certain things that <laughs> may or will happen to you. Number one, you can be arrested anytime and taken to prison or seek an asylum. Number two, you can die. Oh, take <laughs> comrade, the senior comrade is here. <laughs> comrade James Orengo, Karibu Governor. Karibu. Get. Asante sana. That's a senior comrade from the University of Nairobi. So, number one, you can be taken to prison anytime as a comrade, as a leader, even in the national platform. Or you can seek an asylum. Uneza wacha inchi yako anytime utoro, utoroke. Number two, You can die any time. But there's a Latin word that says momento mori. That eventually either way we will die. So even if you die now or die tomorrow or die in a hundred years time, you will still da die. True or false. So you should not fear death. Now on another senior comrade up for Gabriel Oguda. <laughs> Sawa kabisa. Number three, you can enjoy also but most importantly is service delivery to your constituents. So the issue of arbitrary suspensions and expulsions, we can handle in two forms. Number one, by going to court, the litigation process. Because education is entrenched in the constitution as a fundamental human right. Number two, we can talk to the vice chancellors. And I've been doing that a lot. And I want to thank Professor Kiyama the, from the University of Nairobi, the vice chancellor, the current vice chancellor. Baba, around 202 students were suspended, stroke expelled from the University of Nairobi by the time I was leaving. When I became a member of parliament, they were all brought back. As we speak from the University of Nairobi, all those students who were suspended and expelled, even from 10, 12 years ago, were brought back to campus. So that is a person who at least is doing something. So through Baba and even myself, we'll be ensuring that we talk to this vice chancellor so that you are given an opportunity to clear your education. So you should not fear being expelled or suspended. As Baba we know, the first time I received my suspension was in my first semester when I was vying for Secretary General in an organization called ONUS in Chiromo campus. I was suspended and uh, <laughs> may his soul rest in peace. Professor George Albert Magoa Omori. He said that I should be, he, he, actually he was recommending that I ought to have been expelled. But when I went to talk to my principal, Professor Irungu, she gave me another chance. And Professor Magoa accepted that chance. So he gave me another opportunity. That's why when we were vetting Professor Magoa, I was the first person to support him. Because at least he gave me a chance. So as a student leader, you should not fear. And in fact, if you are sitting here and you've never been expelled or suspended, then you are not a student leader. You need to look for one at least. Because <laughs> it will form part of your history. 
the most important thing when you are holding demonstrations, do not destroy university property. The moment you touch university property, you will be suspended or expelled. The moment you leave the university precincts, then that is not a university affair. It now becomes a police affair. With police affair, we have Comrade James Orengo here. He will appear in court for you, so there is no problem. <laughs> so that is concerning suspensions and expulsions. I've addressed the universal suffrage. Now, on your part, you will have to promise us, comrades, that you, your voice must be heard. You must come out and talk about these issues. There's a problem as we speak. I was talking to Baba the other day. Baba was advising me on how the price of fuel in Tanzania is lower than the price of fuel in Kenya. But Kenya is giving an excuse every other time that because of the war between Russia and Ukraine, which when we were campaigning, Ruto himself was saying that that is not the cause of the cost of fuel. If you look at Russia, the economy of Russia is growing as there is recession in the United Kingdom. And Russia is selling its oil products cheaply to the members of BRICS. If you look at the war between Israel and Hamas, that they are quoting again. Yet, in Tanzania, the price of fuel is going down. So this war is only affecting Kenya and not Tanzania. But you see, again, we, we got somebody who is not intelligent. That is root. Lacks wisdom, lacks intelligence, lacks everything. Why? Because simple economics states that if you increase taxes, you will literally create low demand. With low demand, there will be low supply of any good and service. So how then do you want to collect revenue? That's why now they are so desperate, including collecting taxes in everything. So I want to leave it at that, and I want to wish you all the best as comrades, but promise us that the moment you live here, you should not be pushed. You should just do your role as a student leader. I did it. That's why I'm here. Why it not for being a student leader? Why it not for student leadership? I would not be here today. I would not be a member of parliament. So, comrades, you must do something. 